Welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how I added a spool gun to my Yes Welder MiG 250 Pro. Alright, so if you want to avoid your warranty, I'm not sure if this would come with one, but... Alright, so here's what we have going on here. We got the switch that has three positive leads and three negative leads. And so what that's going to do is power comes in through the middle leads and whatever way the switch is pointed, then it puts power to those leads. So right now, the top two wires would have power and then if I switch it, the bottom two will have power. So I thought a wiring diagram would help illustrate how simple this is. Uh, the original layout is just two wires, the red and the black that go from the power source to the drive feed motor. And all we'll be doing is adding a switch and a couple of wires, and this allows us to choose when the power goes where. So we're going to try to cut these roughly in the middle, so I have a little bit of room to work with on both ends. I don't want too short of a lead. Feels like I'm diffusing a bomb or something. Wires. Oh, this nice expensive new tool. Well, who knows how nice it actually is, but hopefully we'll see. Alright, here's take two of the test. Should have my wires going the right way this time. And so that position, that position is making the motor, the original feed motor go. Oh yeah. So it looks like this cheap 2200 amp spool will work. So here we have the end that connects to the welder here. Comes with this nice little cap. Um, but normally there's two wires that come out here and come out the back of this handle. But I thought that if they came around loop, that's kind of a hazard for them getting pulled. So I cut out a little notch here and here and I'm going to try to get that in there. But yeah, it's just two wires that go to a green and a red. I put red to red, black to green. I don't think you can damage it if you mess it up and reverse them. Um, since the DC motor, it should just run reverse. Um, these are overkill, but they're what I had that has a quick disconnect, so I can mount that in the on the welder and have a snazzy little setup. So here I was able to just run that that little RC plug through the the cooling fan grills. I mean, there's not actually a fan back there if you if you look, but. Then that connects to here, which connects to my switch. The, um, if you notice, mine's a little, a little cocked there. The, uh, that's because I, I ran these two thick wires and because I was trying to reuse this connector. Use something thinner like this and it'll look prettier, but yeah, it'll work. Whatever. Alright, so we got our hole marked according to where this screw hole is. Just move it a little over here. Not super precise, but yeah, that should do us. We have some flexibility. Actually, you know, I might go over just another quarter. Alright. Run this around and you get some metal shavings that makes it smooth holes so doesn't cut your wires when you go and install them. So, deburrs are cheap and nice to have. So I got my switch installed into the cover. I'm trying to install the cover and switch. I have my, my leads labeled to make this install easier. And then I also, this is why I have the quick disconnects is because this has to come on, be connected, and then 
I could have mounted the switch somewhere in front, but there's a motherboard and this is just the the easier way to start looking a little more complicated. But now it should just be plug and play. Alright, let's let's give it a whirl. Spool gun. Oh, okay, so that's the main drive motor. Uh -huh. Nice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We'll get this wrapped up and do some, some test welds. Alright, so I just got done with my first test welds on the, the Yes Welder MiG 250 Pro. I'm running this spool gun that I added on. The, uh, it's just a cheap one off eBay. I believe it's a clone of a Miller Matic. Um, I had some pretty good luck on this eighth inch weld tubing doing spray transfer. The, um, the weld welded out nicely. The, um, and yeah, I think this is going to be a viable option for for that kind of work. Um, I didn't have as good a luck on the center wall tubing. Uh, the spray transfer kept blowing out, so I eventually switched to short circuit transfer, which is just a lower voltage weld, um, and that ended up going going quite a bit better. But I still got a lot of a lot of work to do. Um, I've only spool gun MIG welded once before, and that was years ago. But it's looking like this is a a pretty cheap upgrade. So I went ahead and cut these welds up and acid etched them so hopefully you can see the the different colors there. Um, it's a slight different color there and there where the weld was. And what that is showing is the penetration of this weld. And you can also learn other things like, oh, I got some porosity in there, uh, which is probably because I didn't clean my base metal very good. So you can you can see there and there. I was pretty impressed though with how it handled the quarter inch aluminum stock. The uh, You can see that one has some pretty good penetration there. It's a nice looking weld. And then this one's a, oh there we go. Got a nice nice bead in there. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty capable machine if it can weld quarter inch aluminum in a single pass like that. Yeah, and I think you can apply this to most welding machines out there if you follow these instructions. Um, this one just has a Euro style connector, um, so that's that's what I had to buy. But I think if you find the the other type of connector, you could still splice in these wires off the f feed motor and um, 
and convert your your MIG welder into a spool gun MIG welder. So I managed to modify the spool gun to take these black spools, which are a little more standard than those white spools. And it was pretty easy. All I needed to do was get a slightly longer bolt, a nut and a washer, and then I drilled out a wooden dowel to take out some of the slack in there. And so I'm at about 500 bucks for the whole setup because I got the welder on the sale and it's it seems to be a pretty capable machine and now that I have the spool gun my changeover time from alumin aluminum to steel is very minimum I have an argon tank and a mixed gas tank and so I can uh, just swap over my gases and swap over my leads and my machine's set up to do a completely different job in a matter of like a minute which is super quick changeover compared to having to get the Teflon liner out of your your MIG whip and then put the steel liner in and then then re feed the steel through it so it's a, it's a huge upgrade for changing over and you don't run into bird's nests like you do when you have a Teflon liner which is which is a huge problem because then the, the reset for that is is pretty labor intensive and if this bundles up it has to travel six inches you can fix it right away instead of having it travel 12 feet and having to untangle the machine in there. So yeah, I, I hope this video helps someone. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Cool, thanks for watching.